good evening it is here at uh, the coming from the ihab cultural village it's your favorite show sankofa and we are back in the studio here tonight i am with a very bright mind uh in the form of mr august maletski i will give him a chance to quickly introduce himself before i introduced to you the topic for tonight mr malet yeah thank you very much i'm august maletski martin luther high school educated son of the republic of namibia i'm impressed by the fact that i'm being hosted in by a show with the name of khaihap i'm sure that not many namibians know about khaihap as a result of the way in which our history is unfolding but i am sincerely privileged and uh, honored by the fact that you have me here on a platform bearing the great name of that heroic son of the soil taihap mm -hmm. a member that has been compelled mm -hmm. to the recesses of the minds of namibia's history mm -hmm. oh yes thank you for having me i'm looking forward to uh, add value to your show and uh, yes indeed Thank you Mr. Malet. Okay, uh, the show is actually the Sankofa show. This is the Sankofa podcast. What the word Sankofa means, it's an Akan term. Uh, Akan of the people of Ghana. It's a tribe in Ghana and uh, the term belongs to them. It means basically to look back to the past and learn from the past, uh, using the learnings of the past to help you propel the way for the future. And we will have a lot of topics about indigenous knowledge systems. and how that can help us in this day and age and what we can do from there but uh since you uh mentioned haihap cultural or on haihap so so well okay, would you do you mind uh, sharing a bit about your knowledge of haihap the figure haihap yeah at the risk of being inaccurate mm. i know for a fact that uh, haihap is one of the greatest heroes that this country ever produced when it comes to the liberation history put in its true and proper context he was a damara man yes he was a damara man he was a, one of the greatest bravest damara fighters freedom fighters ever known to the liberation history of the republic of namibia and that is obviously long before the wamblan people's congress and the wamblan people's organization came into being mm. Uh, yes so uh uh Tehap is an honorable person he's a great great captain um colorly to him would be the likes of Osia Kutako Hendrik Wetboy and those people it is just very sad that was his league that is it's just very sad that uh, Tehap does not enjoy the prominence of the Hendrik Wetboys and the, the Hosea Kutakos okay. but uh, true historians those that are true and sincere to the history of Namibia will tell you that mm. he is in the league of the 100 bad boys okay. Hosea Kutakos okay. okay. no good now Mr. Malets in Namibia uh, there is something brewing a very distasteful uh, uh, tribalistic uh, Agen not agenda but the, the the tribalism is brewing in Namibia it's been for a while now and it is really surfacing uh, i want us to concentrate our conversation it's not restricted but concentrated on the the topic of tribalism and perhaps racism uh, perhaps the difference what what is the difference between racism and tribalism anyway yeah you see you have to look at these two concepts in context okay uh discriminating against a foreigner would be said as being racist mm -hmm. if a black person in namibia discriminates against a white foreigner mm -hmm. they'll say he's racist mm -hmm. right but essentially he's not racist he's xenophobic okay. okay okay because he belongs to a different country and he doesn't want he doesn't know, he has a phobia of mm -hmm. foreigners he doesn't mm -hmm. want foreigners in his country mm -hmm. right resistance to foreigners is an offense so, so it's very important that we understand the concepts of racism and tribalism exactly. in its proper context exactly we come from an apartheid background mm -hmm. and the background that we come from mm -hmm. sketches 
the platform, the understanding, right, that we have of what racism and tribalism is. In the Namibian context, understanding tribalism and racism is it's a fine line. But in fact, you know, racism in our context is color-based, right? Because back in the days of apartheid, we were separated along the lines of whites first, then coloreds, then bastards, then, mm -hmm. you know, we were classed. We were classed. Now, that stratification of the different peoples of Namibia was done along racial lines. The whiter you are, the more superior you were to the others. Okay? Mm -hmm. And in our context, racism therefore goes with the color of your skin. Okay? Obviously, there is much more to it. But to antagonize and reject and be prejudicial to another person because of his skin color, right? The lightness or darkness of his skin color is being racist. And that is, strictly speaking, against the backdrop of the history that we come from. I get you. Now, in context again, mm -hmm. tribalism. What is tribalism? Tribalism would be um, where we have different tribes, mm -hmm. right? We have the Damara people, we have the Hero people, we have the Nama people, we have the Ovambo people, and within the Ovambo people, we have the Kwanyamas, mm -hmm. we have the Dongas, mm -hmm. uh, just like within the Damaras, you have the Khoudman, you have the Taikoman, you, you, you have all these different tribes, right? So tribalism is one's devotion, right? Above everything else to his tribe. To his tribe. And before I consider the interest of anything else, mm -hmm. I first think about my tribe, my tribe. right? And that is the greatest or the most dangerous thing that can happen to a nation. Tribalism. Absolutely. It started in Namibia. I think I think we were basically a more united country before we got independent. Absolutely. I remember, you know, staying in the then Wambulokasi mm -hmm. when when um Club Thriller was opening mm -hmm. in the in the early eighties. I was staying in a Wambula Kasi, okay. right? And I was sleeping at my Wambu mother's house. That's, that's just prior to independence. Yeah. And there was no discrimination Nothing. because of your skin I color. I walked Wambula Kasi, sorry for the word now, but that's the way you, we call it. Yeah, Even yeah, today yeah, it's yeah. known as Wambula Kasi. Yeah, yeah. Walked from Wambula Kasi to Faluk in, 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 in Komasdao and nothing happened to me and my Wambu brother. That's the way we left. We were... Perhaps there were some people looking at what is this guy doing with this black one. But in our minds, you know, we were equal. We were equal. He was my brother, and that's it. Uh, what I'm saying, trying to the message I'm trying to get to you is, you know, before independence, we were so united against the dangers and the threat of apartheid yes. that we had forsaken our tribalist backgrounds, yes. our tribal tendencies, yes. took backstage. We had forgotten about it because our focus was united against defeating the common enemy, which was racism, being treated as second-class citizens by pale-skinned white people. That was our focus. Unfortunately, after independence, things changed drastically. I, I can vouch for it and tell you yeah. that any honest and sincere Namibian would tell me that... that uh, Prior to independence, you know, despite the fact that we had Bambu Lokasi, Nama Lokasi, Damara Lokasi, Pomas Dal, and what, 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 the tribalism, the sensation of apartheid amongst tribes was not, it was non-existent because of the fact that we were so united and focused against a com common enemy. Do you think, how do we have it to, to, to get back there? Because well, that's actually where I'm going and what I'm advocating for. Yeah, you see, but but the name of your show is, let's see where we come from in order to determine where we are headed. Mm -hmm. 
How did tribalism, how did a people that were so united yes. against yes. a common, common enemy. enemy? And when I say common enemy, I don't mean white people. Yeah, yeah, no, I okay. don't mean Germans and Afrikaners or what. I mean a common enemy that classified us in terms of race yes. and that, that, that treated us as second class citizens in our own country. Right? Uh, what happened after independence is that a small minority of people came from abroad and uh, regrettably the leadership that we had within Namibia at, the time. at that time under the gallant leadership of the late Tadema Mahulili in whose shadow I have grown up uh, in Wallfish Bay and uh, Daniel Chongarero and you know his likes they took a back seat it's like uh, they were overwhelmed by these gentlemen who were abroad when the neoma them came you know all these shall i refer to them as aliens because they were abroad and when they came back to namibia mm -hmm. when these aliens came back into namibia you know our leadership the internal leadership that we had mm -hmm. simply took a backstage it was like a euphoric moment. Wow, they were outside of Namibia for 30 years and they are back. Let them have, let them have it all. They must it. So let them have it all. You know, it was sort of an honorary thing that we did, okay. but it went unchecked and uncontrolled. Okay. How did it happen? To the extent that uh, the first president appointed the first ambassadors from one tribe. The first seven ambassadors that were appointed as ambassadors and high commissioners of the Republic of Namibia were from the Owambo tribe. I personally sat back and because I was, I was a good friend of my late, fr of late Erwin uh, uh, Kesep who passed away. His uncle happened to be Mr. Moses Garoy. Mm -hmm. When I confronted him and I said, you know, but uh, how come that this happens? You know, he said to me, Something I will never forget. Just take care of yourself. That's what he said. That's what the late Moses Garoy said to me. Just take care of yourself. You know, I was taken aback. Incidentally, on a different occasion, when I met the late Mr. Theo Ben Gurirab, he happened to have been a colleague of one of my father figures at the then Augustinium High School. He also said the same to me. He said to me, just take care of yourself. So the the, the, the culture that they brought in here was, although you see these wrong things, don't say, anything. don't say anything. Keep quiet and take care of yourself. Right? And I have over the years decided that I will do the exact opposite. I will call a spade by its name, whether you like it or not. And that is what I'm doing. So, in order to remedy this evil of tribalism that we have in this country, we have to recognize the fact that it was created, it was brought into Namibia by those that were in exile. Okay. And they imposed it on us. How did they impose it? By taking positions of power within the government, right? And economically empowering Namibians along tribal lines, right? For every 10 basaris that were given, 9.9% .9 were given to the Owambo people. And I'm saying this with the greatest of respect. Yeah. If you look at the fruits of it, 30 years after independence, mm -hmm. you will see that uh, the specialist surgeons mm -hmm. that are in Namibia, they're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Doctors, you know, professionals, mm -hmm. they come from one tribe, principally the Wambo people. I have nothing against that, but I'm just speaking facts. I get you. Yes, I get you. You see, there's a, there, there's a statement that was, the narrative was, in order to get something from the government or to be empowered economically, we must change our surname to Onglumbashe. So that your, your surname sounds like Onglumbashe, you know, in order to benefit from the economic resources of this country. Now, that is the unfortunate trajectory that we embarked upon ever since Namibia gained its independence. And every sincere, truthful Namibian that is truly bothered by the current status of this country will agree with me. So, how do we remedy it? Yeah. 
how do we get back to where we were? Because no, what you're saying is that it's 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 it's, it's a popular narrative, and it is it, it it's in many people's minds and in many people's mouths. Not everybody is as outspoken as you, but uh, what you're saying, many people can attest to now. Because there, there are even more examples of, you know, boards of companies and uh, some critical key positions and uh, lists of employees of certain uh, government entities where you find preference clearly given to certain tribes. Yes, no, no you, you do see these things. What can we do? Oh, what are the dangers of this? The dangers Start of it, obviously, history teaches us mm. what happened in Rwanda. Mm. You see, when somebody has nothing to lose, mm. right? That's a dangerous He's a very person. dangerous person. That's a dangerous person. Yes. A disempowered person mm -hmm. is a very dangerous person. Look at the Palestinians. Mm -hmm. They blow themselves up in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. When you have nothing to lose, you become a very dangerous person. Absolutely. And that is a situation that we should av avoid at all costs in Namibia. Mm. Right now, you know, with tribalism, cultural genocide, our people have grown up thinking that, you know, our people even aspire, some of them even aspire to be like the Obambo tribe. Have, 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 have some of them on the board of your company? Yes, or on, you know, it's as, like... As, uh, as a director, silence. Yeah, on a cultural day, I'll, 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 I'll dress up like, you know, or in the clothes of my boss. Mm -hmm. To impress him, I will wear like, the ladies would buy Obambo cultural outfits mm -hmm. and, you know, get dressed up in this uh, fashionable, I think it's black and pink, outfits that the Obambo ladies wear. Very beautiful, nothing wrong with it. But we should be aware of the fact that cultural genocide is not something that is committed. You know, like you take the knife and you stab somebody. It's something that happens subtly. Right? You won't notice it. But when you open your eyes, you will see that your culture is gone and there's only one culture. You practice only one tradition. Nowadays, people who dress up in Obambo dresses, you know, Obambo clothing, bastard ladies would do that, colored ladies would do that, Nama ladies would do that, and uh, they look beautiful. It's fashionable. Mm -hmm. But the underlying issue is what drives them to do that? Why are they not motivated to dress up in their own clothing? Or let's say, why would, for example, a bastard lady not dress up in the traditional Ovahero clothing mm. and vice versa? Mm. Why is it that you would see all the other tribes, right, only dressing up in the Ovambo dresses mm -hmm. and not vice versa? What does it tell you? Is it that, it's, it, this is, that, is what I, what, that is what has always been referred to as subtle, right? cultural genocide. Mm. When you open your eyes, mm. you realize that, oh, I thought it was an innocent act. I bought this for my daughter, thinking nothing of it. But when you look at it cl with closer inspection, you know, upon closer inspection, you realize that you were caught fast asleep and napping. Okay, Mr. Malet, we're going to come back on that because there's something I want to mention on that cultural genocide thing and how I wish the Namibians could... Uh, in celebrate each other's cultures more right after the break. On that note, we are back. Like I said, Mr. Malet, now what I envision, and I said this on a show previously, is that I would love to see a Namibia that's much more united. Just the same way that you explained that we were before independence. Where we get a, 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 a situation where we proudly celebrate each other's cultures. Not neglecting your own, you still maintain the pride and, and uh, your own identity and so on, but we cross-culturally, we just have that love because I believe 
And if you look at all these cultures, in fact, I can say in all the cultures of Africa, African tribes, there are basic underlying values of love, the elderly one looking after the younger one, and uh, trust, and there is sharing. And they, this, these are things that were ingrained in our cultural upbringing. In all of these cultures, yes. underlying, we developed other things with greed and all these things. We we we, we shifted from this basic African Bantu uh, uh, tribe. You see, it's like the concept of Ubuntu. Ubuntu. You see, yeah. that, that's the Kindness, one I was looking for. humanity. Yeah, thank you. Kwekasi. Thank you. That, that underwrites all of Africa's cultures and traditions. Thank you. Unfortunately, greed step in and for one or the other reason, mm. people that are otherwise good people, right, opted to sacrifice these higher values, mm. these higher ethos that underwrite our cultures and traditions. Mm. for self-empowerment, economic in- empowerment. That's mm. greed. That's greed. So you are right. Mm. The Nama culture, the Herero culture, the Guanyama culture, I would gladly partake in, the, in in all the traditional activities. Mm. Gladly. But not at the expense of one of your own or the other. Okay. Right? And I wouldn't want one to be overemphasized over the other. Yes. It should be a matter of us entertaining each other's cultures, you know, uh, and celebrating each other's traditions. Absolutely. uh, Without restriction. Absolutely. Realizing that we are one. Exactly. That's the thing. We need to get to that collective mentality. Collective. We need to strive for our collective survival and collective prosperity. What does the word Harambe mean again? Pulling in the same direction. Or, yes, you know, um, yes. How are we uh, there? Well, right now, I think we are pulling in probably 14 or 20 different directions. Now, the danger of that is if we pull in such different, we're creating loopholes for more and more enemies to penetrate our camp. You see, as we are moving in different directions and each one doing his own thing and we are not connected and we are not working as a unit. Because the way I see life going these days, Africa, actually, not, not only in Namibia, Africans need to learn that it's now time to really stand together. It is now time to really leave petty differences and greed and uh, corruption and nepotism and these things aside and work with and put get people into positions by virtue of merit and not coming from a certain ethnic group, coming, uh, having a certain background or connected to who and on, on that basis. Because if we if we continue on this, then we're not serious. You see, easier said than done. Mm. When the trajectory that has been set mm. was set on a tribal tone, we need to violently break it down. And I don't mean by picking up guns and fighting. What I mean is, let us begin by calling a spade a spade. Mm. You know, let us start saying, Mm -hmm. man, that Damara guy, he speaks the truth. That Vambu guy is a true gentleman. He acknowledges the truth. Yes. You know, let us say, man, that Nabeba is a he's a man of his word. Yes. Right? No, you're very right. Let's call a spade a spade. Yes. But the more we live in denial, the more we mitigate nonsense, mm. war provoking tribalism, mm. we are moving closer and closer to living in a minefield. In a minefield, I mean, you know how dangerous it is to move and live in a minefield. Yeah. If you move to the left the risk of explosion is high. Mm. To the right, whatever direction you may face or you may face the consequences of an explosion. Mm. We don't want to live in a minefield. Mm. We are free human beings. Mm. And in order to promote that freedom spirit, Mm. right, we must call a spade a spade. Mm. 
There is no use, you know, mitigating nonsense, right? And putting velvet gloves on to treat a gorilla that is hurting you. Mm. It's the wrong way to go. Call a spade a spade. That is the, that's, that's, the, the fundam, that's the fundamental thing that we should do. Recognize the error of your ways. Only then can we rectify it. Yes, but if you do not recognize that 99% of the chief executive officers of the Republic of Namibia's public service mm. comes from one tribe since 1990, that's How do you want to remedy the situation? No, that's if problem. you don't want to acknowledge the fact that for the past 30 years, only a select group of people, right, derived 80% of the income of this country. And yet, and you, you were preaching one Namibia, one nation, right? And when you were challenged with these raw facts, you call the challengers tribalists and troublemakers. I mean, what do you want to remedy? That is the dictatorship that we should kill in this country. That is the spirit, the root cause that we should uproot. But to babysit it and to mitigate it and to say, yeah, but you know, it happened. So let's forget about it. It happened. Now face the consequences of it. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm sorry mm -hmm. and do the right thing. Right? Be remorseful about it. Don't celebrate and say, yes, that's all that they can do. It was nice seeing what they are doing, but that's also all that they can do, right? Don't want to walk into the police station, a national police station, overwhelm me with your mother tongue when you are on national duty and show me that you can speak your mother tongue wherever you want to, right? That's, that's, that's fostering tribalism, the spirit of tribalism. What now if the Nama guy decides to speak Nama? And the Damara guy decides to speak Damara. And the Herero guy in a national police station. What, what would we have? The commanding structure should get things in order by facing reality. Look, I don't deny the fact that if two Herero guys are together, or if they meet, right, they will speak in their mother tongue. It's unavoidable. But at least if you are in a national, if you are employees of the... Of, of an institution like the Namibian police, mm. right? Mm. Dealing with members of the public on a daily basis. Mm. And you stand there and you speak Chinese, mm. right? When a German comes in, mm. how would the German feel? Would he feel that his interests are, are being policed? Or would he feel terrified? Mm. Especially if the German has a complaint against another Chinese. Mm. <laughs> I mean, just imagine. Yeah. No, I right? You. Now, that is what is happening in Namibia. It's, it's, it, it happens. It's, it's not a secret. It has been happening. Everybody knows that. You. So we have to admit the wrongs that, of Namibia. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge what we have done wrong. And realize what can come exactly. if we don't. If we don't. Because you've alluded to a, a very good example when you spoke about the Rwandan genocide you yeah. briefly touched on it those were people of the same country different tribes yeah and it's because of the differences the tribal differences that that led to the genocide now uh it may seem that now namabians are peaceful people and uh we don't have it to to get there and so you must but, also understand that it wasn't only because of tribal differences it was mm -hmm because of the economic resources of the country mm -hmm. being distributed along tribal mm -hmm. lines. Yes. Economic empowerment of one tribe vis-a-vis uh -huh. -vis the, the economic minority. disempowerment of the other. Yes. That is yes. what caused mm -hmm. the genocide in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are some of the tendencies that, 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 that we are experiencing here. So we are actually, if you read the comments on the social media platforms, you, you now have a situation where ordinary people exchange this kind of words. This, this, there's, there's like this, this battle ongoing there. This, like the recent incident that we had about, um, I didn't want to mention uh, actually that, that name has been 
much spoken about yeah. the Nangolo, uh, Eva, Eva Nangolo saga. Ministry of Justice. Yes. Yeah. So on that one, you could see the undertone, the the the, ex, the verbal exchanges between different tribal groups on this matter. Where, where people were now like getting personal with each other coming from this tweet so there you can see that this is a problem that's just been highlighted it's an existing thing what he said about it is that you know this is a new generation mm. and this comes from them mm. right and not only that She's an educated lawyer, mm. right? Somebody that should be approaching life with the necessary caution, especially when she's making public comments. Mm -hmm. Now, can you imagine how far, how 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 far reaching, mm. right? The damage is that was caused by the appointment of seven men from one tribe as ambassadors to the <laughs> of the Republic of Namibia, from one tribe. I mean, I don't blame the Nangolo lady, you know, it's, she grew up like that. That's the, that's the spirit in which she's, she was raised. And perhaps at university, that's the culture that they practiced. Because uh, probably 80% of her class belonged to her tribe. For that's where all the resources went since independence. So now she was just doing what she's used to. Now, in order to bring about a change, we must change the mindset of our people yeah. by radically telling them the truth. No, that's very, very, very important because when you have uh, in a in a country in a country set up a dominant tribe and you've got uh, minority tribes, that you 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 have created this atmosphere of some of your citizens feeling lower, feeling that they are lower citizens towards others. What does this do to one's zeal for life and going out there and being the best that you can be when you are subjugated, perhaps a harsh word, but when you are made to feel less than a different tribe? And then, and yet we are wondering why certain people are so poor, why certain people are not coming up. You see, that is the motive for living and promoting tribalism is to make other tribes feel of a lesser value and to make one tribe appear to be superior than the others. That's, that's what motivates them. They want to feel that they are a special, you know, select group of people that were created by God mm. or some deity. Mm. That they are above, that they are supreme, mm. superior, better than the rest. And, you know, we all know that they are not. Mm. We so. all know that I'm not better than you. We know that you are not better than me. Mm. We are human beings, mm. right? And... In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., mm. it is not what we, what the way we look, our tribe or race that defines us, but it is the content of the character that we betray from me to you, from you to me. Mm. That spirit, the content mm. of our character should be underwritten by the principle of Ubuntu and it should crisscross, mm. right? across tribal boundaries, across racial boundaries. We are one people and nobody is superior to the others. Absolutely. The Ovambo people are not superior to the Kalats. The Kalats are not superior. The Damaras are not inferior to anybody. Absolutely. We are all equal. Absolutely. And I'm saying this with the greatest of respect. Absolutely. I have Ovambo mothers, mm -hmm. mothers which I love like, you know, real, real family. Women that have raised me. I have Ovambo brothers. I have Damara brothers. I have Colored brothers. I have. That's it. In the traditions of the then Martin Luther High School, then Debra, you know, we were raised 
and we simply did not know what it is to be of a tribal background. We we didn't understand that. These things were brought to light after independence. No, Mr. Malets, and I think we can definitely turn it around. Uh, in conclusion, as we are wrapping up, what do we want? From my side, I would say equal equality in all areas in terms of wealth distribution, representation on boards. If the uh, army recruits equal representation, if the police recruits equal representation, wherever in all sectors, private sector, public sector, equal representation based on merit. I shouldn't have to be white to get a piece of the uh, what, whichever industry. I shouldn't have to go get somebody from a specific tribe on my company's papers in order to get something. These are the things that should end. And I think it can. Oh, yes, it As can. What's your final ta- you see, take on? The thing is, is, some people are more equal than others. We need to be very careful. Okay. In order to remedy the evils of the past, hmm? we must recognize that, okay, now, in order to fill these 100 vacancies within the Namibian police. Mm -hmm. We understand that tribalism will not dictate things to us. But in order to empower those tribes that were neglected over the past 30 years, Mm -hmm. this is what we are going to do. Mm -hmm. We have 13 tribes in Namibia. Mm -hmm. We are going to make sure that the 100 vacancies Mm -hmm. in the public sector will be proportionately filled from all those 13 tribes. Mm. You can condemn me and you can say that I'm tribalist or whatever, but for every five Damaras, there must be five Namas. For every five Namas, there must be five Ovambos. And for every five Ovambos, there must be five. That is the only way that we will balance mm. the evils that were done to this country. Now, Mr. Malet, in terms of population numbers now, uh, given the differences in the total number of uh, Tamaras versus the total number of Caprilians versus the total number of uh, you know, Namus, yeah. uh, Chonas, and so on. Do you think you will go far or, or, or it is possible practically to restrict it to Proportional. equal proportionately? Well, of course, given the prejudice that the other tribes suffered over the past 30 years, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. In order to do justice, to the system. And to remedy the uh-huh. prejudice that the other minority tribes over the past 30 years Enjoyed. suffered, uh-huh. right? Okay. Mm-hmm. Doing that as remedial action for the next five years. Will balance the blink. Oh, it won't even balance it, but it mm-hmm. will at least be a step in the right direction. I get it. <laughs> Mr. Malet, thank you very much for Most having welcome. graced this uh, occasion uh, with your wise words. Thank you very much for your presence here tonight and it is I, I really appreciate it you're and most welcome you are always welcome to touch me and come back on scene and i'm sure you've got a following yourself i see your stuff on tiktok and you are quite a busy man on the social scene we see you it's on that note thank a, you man it's always a pleasure to contribute constructively to the development of my country and sure yeah thank you too sure thank you on that note Thank you very much for having viewed this episode. If you haven't yet subscribed, liked, shared this video, please do so. And see you in the next. Ciao.